But is it, oh, what, what's your last name again? Vance, V-A-N-C. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, welcome to the fourth episode of my best of the Frankie Slauson Show. And uh, to really wrap up the the uh, December best of show, uh, I got a guy that, uh, well, he's a monster TV host. He's a commercial guy. And he's one heck of an animator. Craig Vance, welcome to the show. No, thank you very much. And uh, uh, for some people who are, are, are maybe familiar with the uh, stuff that he does on the animation por- uh, part anyway, uh, his uh, TV host name is uh, Ormond Grimsby. So. <laughs> That's right, yeah, yeah. Um, he's an uh, undertaker for uh, the already undertaken. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> And, and how I was able to get a hold of, of, of uh, Craig here is uh, uh, a while back ago he did uh, an episode of uh, Mikey's Adventures uh, for all you people who are familiar with uh, Mike Massey of uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And Mike happens to be a friend of mine. So with worse come to worse here, <laughs> I uh, got a hold of Craig here and, uh, on his MySpace page. And, uh, well, like I say, welcome to the show. It's a, a pleasure and honor to have somebody of your stature to come down to the radio. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be here. So now, uh, tell, tell some of the listeners, though, what is it that you actually do? Uh, just whether it's your TV host stuff or your commercials, we'll talk about a little bit of everything that you do, but uh, give people okay. kind of a background of what, what your job is. Or Well, um, the, the TV thing um, is a, uh, like you mentioned, a horror host show uh, that's a throwback to the 50s and 60s uh, where we show an old uh, B horror movie every week and then it's hosted by um, uh, a ghoulish host, uh, in our case, Ormon Grimsby. And uh, he does little bits on the show and, uh, you know, we have kind of different characters that come on the show and uh, uh, kind of surround him and, and fill out his world. And then, uh, yeah, and then we show the, the B horror movies. And uh, we've been doing that for about a year and a half in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, around North Carolina. Um, we just uh, started showing the uh, program in Durham um, maybe six months ago and then are set to air in Henderson in the early part of next year. So it's it's growing bit by bit, by bit but uh, it's definitely um, um, something that's a throwback. It's uh, got a real nostalgic feeling, and it's all in black and white. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, we have a, a lot of clips and images uh, from the show on our website, not MySpace. Um, and uh, the website is uh, mcftv.com. If anybody wanted to check out um, what uh, I look like and what the show is kind of about. <laughs> now, uh, now, uh, with, with that, did uh, since you are uh, uh, an animator, did you uh, draw the picture of yourself or that you have on your page? Uh, there's a couple different images, um, and I did most of the artwork. Uh, we've got a new T-shirt that's out and available now, and I, I uh, worked with another artist, uh, Chris Sear, a uh, local guy, uh, and he did the original concept uh, for that, and we kind of went back together and kibitzed it um, until we came up with uh, the look for that. Um, and then uh, we've got some other artwork on um, our My- MySpace page um, that we will have posters and possibly T-shirts made of in the future by uh, an artist, Eric Pigors, out of uh, California. And he's actually f- pretty famous uh, for doing a line uh, called Toxic Tunes. Okay. And um, he does uh, his own T-shirts and print work and books and stuff like that. And we've been working with him uh, on a number of projects recently. And uh, we, we also try and do... Um, stuff on uh, uh, monster pop culture, uh, in addition to uh, showing the old movies, um, whether it has to do with uh, artists locally or someone who's doing something interesting in the genre, um, either movies or cartoons or comic books or, or music like Rockabilly or Surf. Yeah. Um, and uh, we've got a band, uh, uh, the Ghastly Ones, out of California, a really cool surf band. And they let us use some of their music for our theme song. And um, we've showed off some of their videos and stuff like that. And then uh, other artists we've worked with, uh, we did an interview with Bernie Wrightson um, last fall. 
and like I mentioned, Eric Pigors of Toxic Tunes we've done an uh, interview with, and uh, uh, a couple of filmmakers, Brian and Lawrence Avenette Bradley out of California, who just did their first big horror film. Uh, we had them on the show last year. So, you know, we try to mix it up and do some interesting stuff, not just the old B movies, you know. Oh, yeah, try, yeah. Try, try and give exposure to uh, other artists. Oh, that's 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 cool. And, uh, B movies, uh, those are movies that you would normally see any you wouldn't normally see anywhere else, huh? That's right. Well, it, it, you know, the, the stuff we show used to be pretty prevalent, you know, and now with cable, that kind of killed a lot of it. And uh, so it's, it, I think it's interesting to kind of be bringing some of that back, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, has horror always been something of an interest to you, like growing up as a kid, or? Yeah, I, uh, uh, I, I'm a freak. I grew up in uh, the 70s, um, and this stuff was kind of really big in the 60s is when it had its heyday, but, you know, it was still going in the 70s, and every area, you know, yeah. I mean, is going to get back a ways, but uh, it did myself. But uh, before cable, every area, you know, we only had like four channels, six, seven channels maybe at the most. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I remember actually having a black and white TV, but anyway, every day they had their own horror host, and uh, it was a pretty common thing, you know, it'd be like the weatherman or, or, you know, some TV personality newscaster during the day, and his, at night, during the weekends or something, would do this horror host gig yeah. for the networks, and, uh, you know, they'd own a, a, a library of films that they maybe purchased and had the rights to show, and so they would use that as cheap programming instead of, so this was even before syndication, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I grew up with that stuff, and uh, I grew up in uh, Detroit, Michigan, and we had a couple different hosts. We had Sir Graves Gasly and The Ghoul, and if you were young, uh, like I was, you were into Sir Graves, and if you were older, a little hipper, uh, you were into The Ghoul, because he was kind of irreverent and blew stuff up and, He's still around, and, and, and a lot of people remember him fondly. But he was a little over my head growing up, so I watched Sir Graves, and he always had these really cool monster movies, and that that was what kind of planted the seed, I guess, um, that uh, always I, I always had the interest in monsters and monster movies. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's pretty uh, pretty creative, uh, just being, uh, being able to bring back the old days of, you know, of uh, horror movies, even even when it's not even Halloween, when it's just uh, any time of the year, and you know, are you, you got, do you got anything planned for the for the holidays for your horror deal? Um, we're trying um, to do a special show for Christmas. I don't know if we'll get it done. Um, uh, the holidays have been kind of rugged, but um, we have 30 shows done, and we were doing them every week. Yeah. Um, but uh, lately, we've kind of gotten off track. But we want, what we would like to do this year is kind of a uh, Christmas Carol kind of uh, uh, vibe, where the host gets visited by one of the ghosts of Christmas past, okay. uh, except it's a ghost from his world. Okay. And then we'll be showing a movie. And then uh, uh, this uh, next segment we're going to have a, a really cool interview slash documentary on a local artist here in Raleigh, uh, Tom Keebler. Okay. Uh, he is a, a sculptor of the bazaar, I guess you would say. He does these life-size sculptures out of silicone of kind of like sideshow freaks. Okay. And he's been featured in uh, Spectrum uh, publication the last four years, I think, four years, which is a... Uh, 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 publication um, uh, that shows off the work of um, commercial artists throughout the year, the best of the work throughout the year, be it illustration or, or advertising or whatever. But he's been in that the last four years, and he uh, lives in the area. And uh, we stopped by the studio and, and got to shoot a lot of footage of his creatures and stuff like that. So I can't wait for uh, that to uh, to show that to everyone. Uh, that's going to be really great, and uh, hopefully we'll have that online. Uh, as soon as it airs. Oh yeah, that, that'd be kind of cool. I mean, I, I, I have I yet to see. Well, I, I see little clips of of your stuff, and you know, but it'd be cool to actually just put on like an actual show. That would be like a webcast because. Huh, yeah. 
Uh, now, uh, other things that you do, too, since I said we're going to talk about uh, other things in your profession, too. Uh, first of all, Mike Massey told me that you were uh, uh, you were in Batman Forever. What part did you play in that movie? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, um, well, uh, that was 96, and uh, uh, at the time I had gone out to L.A. and I was working um, – as a writer at an effects yeah. shop out there and uh, basically a production assistant. And uh, what we were doing is the frozen people from Batman Forever, uh, the props. And um, so I got to work in the fiberglass department a little bit. And uh, at one point they didn't have um, the actors that they needed for the frozen people uh, for their bodies. So they cast a number of us in the shop. Uh, literally and figuratively yeah. they cast our bodies um, and so uh, there's a scene where there's these security guards that get frozen I think they're cops or security guards and they get frozen by Mr. Freeze and uh, one of those guys is, is my body but they had an actor's head that they actually cast okay. out of silicone and uh, so I guess that's my, my, my one Hollywood claim to fame well what the heck I mean <laughs> it, it's a start to something so beautiful you know yeah yeah uh, okay. Yeah. Now, uh, with that, too, uh, Craig here, for those of people who are familiar with TV commercials and, and advertising, and even though he was probably a little like sick of seeing commercials, because, you know, there's a lot of people around that say, God, these freaking commercials, they keep playing, you know, and whatever. This guy is kind of responsible for some of those commercials that you see. Uh, the Chester McCheese, or I think that's right, Chester's Cheeto, <laughs> the Cheetos commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Gillette uh, Razors and... What all? What do you all do? You do? You're the animator for that. We do. Um, I work for a company uh, out of New York. Um, even though I'm in North Carolina, uh, we have a satellite office down here in Raleigh. Um, so we do a lot of animation, computer animation, and uh, effects work for commercials. And uh, yeah, some of the uh, the um, uh, commercials that we've worked on have been Chester Cheetos and uh, some Visa stuff. Um, a lot of the GE commercials where you see dancing animals. Uh, there's one with the dancing elephant that we, uh, uh, our company worked on. And then, um, uh, let's see, a lot of stuff like that. A lot of um, kind of invisible effects work, if you'd like, um, like water and fire and that sort of stuff. But we also do the character stuff. Um, uh, trying to think of uh, some of the bigger ones. Uh, Dairy Queen, we've, we've done some of those. Uh, the ones... There was a spot last spring with um, uh, a couple monsters making monster cookies in the kitchen, <laughs> and uh, the heads had to be, they, they were full-body foam monsters, foam latex, but the faces weren't articulate, articulated enough, and so they wanted to go in and actually do lip sync and have the monsters talk, so we actually created replacement uh, CG heads that um, uh, went over on top of the, um, the practical heads, and uh, had them talk to each other. Okay. Um, and we did some stuff with another Dairy Queen commercial with a Fabio-type model. Uh, he's holding an actress, and a husband comes home, and uh, she's in the arms of this great big hunk, and his hair is blown in the wind. And uh, um, I forget what the tagline is, but um, something along the lines that deflates the, the, the wife's fantasy and the, the uh the Fabio type model's hair, all of a sudden the wind stops blowing and his hair swings down around his shoulders. Well, the hair is all fake. It's all CG, which you'd never know yeah. uh, unless, you know, it's pointed out. But we do a lot of that kind of stuff. Uh, d uh, are you responsible for the uh, Geico commercials at all? Or? No, we don't handle that account, but that's some really, really slick oh, stuff. Uh, well, the instructors over here at uh, Pine and I for one, because this is a college radio station as well as an actual radio station, uh, had a question he wanted to know who does the voice for the Geico Geico yeah, Gecko. I, I, yeah I don't know um, <laughs> I couldn't say but uh, anyway uh, yeah and uh, you've uh, handled some big accounts and uh, what are your, some of your favorite commercials that you've done I like that uh, that Dairy Queen one that's pretty good because it has to do with monsters right <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, we did one for GE about a year ago um and it was uh, another monster one where it looks like Godzilla is coming out of the water, but yeah. it's like a generic lizard. And um, he's, uh, these little kids come running along the beach, and it's 
kind of set up where they're not in the same shot, so you can't tell scale, and it turns out that the, the lizard's like maybe three inches tall, and the little kids pull them up and are swinging them around and laughing at them. Yeah. And we did some stuff where we augmented the costume and added like a, a frill collar and a um, like a spiny um, uh, headpiece that was all CG, and yeah. and that was that was pretty neat because that. Uh, the the uh, compositing came out really well. You'd never be able to tell what was fake and what was real, you know. Oh yeah, and uh, you know, for for you to get some ideas, you know, of uh, future commercials. I know everything's going digital and, and computer wise, but uh, if you ever go, I don't know if you ever been to this site before. It's called RetroJunk dot com. Hmm, sounds familiar. I, I think I might have come across it. Uh, it's a site where you could watch old commercials. Old TV show intros, old movie trailers from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And, and that's kind of what I do on my show once in a while. I play a classic uh, commercial or whatever that's uh, no, no longer in the use, you know. But uh, it's stuff I remember growing up with. And uh, they have every type of genre that you would want from whether it be cars or food or whatever. You may have to check that out again and just... Uh, Maybe it might help you in a future idea or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely have to check it out. There's a lot of content. Um, we we work mostly with public domain content on a monster creature feature on the show I produce. Yeah. And uh, there's a, a, a lot of commercials I'd love to get hold of, like the old uh, Vincent Price uh, shrunken head <laughs> toy commercial that he did. But uh, so much of that stuff is just lost. You well, know? like uh, what 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 decade did he do that at? That, that would have, it, it had to have been the 70s. Okay, you might, if you check out that retrojunk.com, you might, they have a search engine, so you can actually type in what you want, and if uh, you type in Vincent Price, you might be able to find it. Okay, cool, I'll give that a shot, that sounds neat. But, yeah, well, any way to help, I mean, you're, you're helping me, so what the hell, I'll help you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, uh, with uh, everything else that you do uh, on your uh, Monster Creature feature, has uh, like uh, have you ever had like any big time special guests at all like old uh, uh, monster actors at all or anybody that you looked up to? Um, most not too many actors. Mostly it's just artists that um, I've kind of searched out. And uh, the the cool thing is that um, most of the people that um, I've kind of reached out to um, to show the show to and maybe do some you know, cross-promotion with have been really receptive. They love the idea. Oh, yeah. um, uh, Dave Hartman is another uh, artist that we've showed a couple of his films, and he's a, or was a Disney animator, and now I think he, he's pretty much freelance, but um, he does his own stuff on the side and illustration, and he did a lot of, um, he works with Rob Zombie a lot, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he uh, did all the illustration inside, I think, uh, the last Rob Zombie CD, and uh, he just did a video with him, but uh, we showed a couple of his uh, live-action films that he has done, and they're a lot of fun. Um, so I, I really enjoy working with other creative people, you know, trying to do oh, their yeah. own thing. Oh, definitely. Uh, now, uh, I went to the retrojunk.com real quick. Uh, I typed in Vincent Price. They have a, an old game called Hangman that he was he did the commercial for. So it's oh, right. yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember that one. Yeah, it's uh, right on there. So uh, Now, uh when growing up as a kid, uh, did you have any other interests or hobbies? Um, what I really wanted to do was get into um, uh, special effects and uh, makeup special effects, okay. that sort of thing, and um, sculpting and stuff like that. And I did that, um, you know, growing up, uh, you're 10, 11, 12 years old, you know, before video games and oh, yeah. all of that, it, you know, kids were you know, getting their hands in mud and drawn and sculpting and doing all kinds of stuff in their basements. And I sculpted, you know, took a lot of sculpting courses and went to art college and all that and uh, really wanted to get into that. But um, uh, it, the scene, you know, in the 80s seemed like it was the real heyday for monster movies and, you know, American Werewolf and the Fog and Howling and the Thing and all those really pushed the boundaries of what makeup effects could do. And then you had all the films that kind of imitated those in the, the mid-'80s and then kind of got more into the slasher stuff later. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, but it uh, seemed like the bottom of that all kind of fell out in the early-'90s. And, you 
you know, I hate to say it, the advent of uh, CG, everything kind of went and w- was going that way. Um, it seems things have balanced out much more in the industry where the two um, technologies are really augmenting each other and, you know, that people are learning that, you know, not one or the other isn't going to be the uh, end-all, be-all. But uh, uh, back in the early 90s when I was trying to find a job and it, yeah. was, it was really difficult, um, so I, I kind of went back to school and uh, honed my skills and got into the, the CG end of it, um, which was booming at the time. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, ultimately, um, what I really like to do is tell stories, um, and uh, I, I really would like to direct uh, specifically horror films. I mean, I don't have any aspirations beyond that. Oh, yeah. A lot of people just want to direct and tell stories, but I love horror, and uh, I would like to uh, uh, take the next leap and, and uh, do some shorts in a film. Well, you know that Rob Zombie is going to, I think, be directing the Halloween Night movie, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I read that. Um, um, who knows? Hope, maybe <laughs> maybe you might have an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I look at um, the uh, Monster Creature feature as kind of a stepping stone oh, yeah. uh, to the next thing, you know, and it, it's it's a lot of fun. Well, and, you, uh, well, well you know, people are going to look at that and, and say, you know, this, this kid's got something, you know, I mean, they, you know, you have a passion for what you do. Uh, you know, a lot of people have forgotten stuff like that. And, you know, when you bring it back to the past, and it's like, oh, geez, you know, this is actually pretty cool. Yeah, obviously, I think a lot of people are really hungry. Yeah, so, um, obviously you're going to get noticed somehow, some way from doing that. Yeah, yeah, I hope. And uh, people, you know, are, are responding really favorably. I mean, because they get it. They know what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be silly. It's supposed to be cheesy. It's not supposed to be something that's really slick, you know? Yeah. It is bad, you know, but it's supposed to be bad. It's supposed to be funny. Um, and, uh, you know, the people who get it really like it, you know, and the people the people I find that didn't grow up with it and don't understand what it's about don't get it, but, you know, that's fine. It's not yeah. for everyone. But uh, I find that... Um, I, I really thought when I started doing it that, like, college, the college audience would be much bigger than it is. And what it turns out is that, and I don't know why I'm surprised, but the audience that really responds to it is uh, my age group and older, you know, obviously the people who grew up with it and um, kind of remember it from their childhood, you know. Oh, yeah. And those are the guys who are like, oh, yeah, geez, I remember the guy I grew up with. Back in 1965, we had Goulardi or whatever, you know. <laughs> but um, well, yeah, and and, and uh, it's it's kind of too, you know, like uh, well, you you said you were raised in the 70s. Well, I, I was raised in the 80s, and I was born in 1983, so I'm only 23 years old. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, I don't know. For for me, anyway, even though this interview is not really about much about me, but you know, for me, it's uh, you know, horror. I'm not really huge on horror. I'll be honest, but I. Uh, I, I'm trying to get kind of into it. I don't like like the gross, gross horror, you know, like the uh, like the see no evil or the you know, you know, hostile or whatever. Because I think they're I think they repeat themselves too much. I, yeah, I agree. I I like the more imaginative stuff. And like the I like Freddy and Jason stuff. stuff. You know, like the Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> yeah, I like the uh, the stuff, uh, the old Corman stuff from uh, the 50s and 60s, the uh, Edgar Allan Poe stuff. Um, you know, uh, Mask of the Red Death, and you know, of course, the classics, Wolfman and Frankenstein and yeah. Dracula and all that stuff. Um, How about like the uh, Exorcist and all that stuff? You like that? Yeah, that's probably one of the the best horror films ever made. You know, that scared the the living hell out of me when I was. <laughs> I mean, I was too young to see that in the theater, but uh, that scared the the heck out of me when I was, you know, twelve, and I think I saw it for the first time on TV, and I was oh, yeah. like, oh my god. What is this? Are you, are you a type of guy that gets into like the, the high definition big screen TVs and the surround sound when you watch a horror film at all? Or well, I used to be. Now I, I got a kid, and uh, it kind of went to the wayside. I uh, <laughs> the the, uh, the disposable income is no more. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, what I mean, like if you if you really want that that feel nowadays, and because everything's going digital. You know, with DVDs or whatever, and even now Blu-ray DVDs uh, and high-definition DVDs or whatever, you know, the, the thing, way to go is uh, DVD because 
You watch a movie like you're big on horror, okay, get yourself a, a movie that's really going to freak you out and watch it on a nice TV and the surround sound and really crank it up and boy, I tell you, yeah. that definitely freak out me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, personally, I mean, I, I had an idea and I thought, you know, it, it's so expensive to pr- produce a film and, and getting back to wanting to direct my own yeah. film. And we shoot everything on, uh, on digital video. Uh, we use, uh, we shoot everything at 24p on, uh, uh, Panasonic DVX 100. So it's, it's a little better quality than what, you know, you might be used to seeing on TV or, or especially public access. Um, yeah. but it gives us a really nice quality and a lot of, um, low budget films are, are, are shooting digitally now because it's so expensive to process and transfer film. And then if you're not even shooting for theatrical release, you know, you're going direct to DVD. I mean, sure, there's inherent quality in shooting 35 that you're not going to get in any other medium. But, I mean, if it's going right to DVD, why not shoot for that medium? And yeah. Helena and I thought, you know, back in the early 80s, there were a lot of companies that, that actually created films just for the, the videotape market, which was brand new back then. And now it seems that the DVD market is so huge. I mean, it's just gigantic that, you know, it seems like there's a niche there that you could shoot, you know, you could, you could create a production company where you were shooting four or five films a year just to distribute on DVD and set up a business model that way. Oh, yeah. And uh, just to get them in the shelves on Best Buy. <laughs> but the, the problem is, is that the distribution is so tight that, um, most of the companies, the Walmarts, the Best Buys, the Barnes and Nobles, will not look at you unless you're under, you know, a Time Warner umbrella. So that's kind of the rub. Yeah. There are a, a, a number of, of independent guys like Charles Band, and he shot like a lot of those really crappy 80s movies like Dial Man and, uh, was it Puppet Master? Okay. He did all those with the idea of, you know, he set up his own production tech company where, it was the same people, and they worked with the same cast over and over, and, you know, it was like a family, and you just turn out these movies, you know, five, ten a year, direct to video, and, uh, you know, you were able to self-perpetuate and make a small business out of it. But uh, apparently even he's hurting these days with the uh, stranglehold on uh, distribution. But I still think there's something there, you know, where you could set up, you know, a, a, a niche and, and cater to that market. I don't know, maybe there's something with the Internet. If there was some way yeah. that you could recoup your money, if people, you know, were willing to to pay to watch something that way, you know? Oh, sure. And, uh, well, I tell you what, we're almost out of time. But, I, well, first of all, I'm not going to let you go yet. But, uh, well, <laughs> first of all, thank you for uh, letting me interview you. I know uh, I hope I wasn't too much of a bother, you know. Oh, no, not at all. Thank uh, you for uh, having me on the show. And uh, I know Mike, you know, told me that <laughs> got to kind of calm down when I try to get a hold of you. I realize you're a busy guy, and you know, uh, you know, your time was very limited. But uh, uh, I want to thank you for having me or let me interview you. And the last thing I, I'm going to do, or that I normally do on the show, is have uh, have you or you know, if you've heard my show in the past. Uh, you, you say who you are, who you listen to, and what station you listen to. Okay. And, uh, well, my name is, okay, my name's Frankie, you know, Frankie right. Slauson, and then, uh, you're listening to Pioneer 90.1. So. Okay. So, whatever you're ready. All right. Hey there, this is Craig Vance from Monster Creature Feature, and you're listening to Frankie on Pioneer 90.1. All right, and I appreciate it, and you have a good holiday. And uh, You too. And I, once this, I, I, what I do, too, is I always put my uh, Internet uh, show, or my shows, not only on the uh, radio, but I also put them on my MySpace page. So once I get this updated on my MySpace page, I'll send it, uh, you a copy, okay? Fantastic. All right, cool. Have a good day and have a happy holiday, man. You too. Thank you very much. All right, bye. All right, thank you, man. And uh, like I say... uh